Welcome to Drinks with Ron. I'm Ron. And it's going to be a long weekend. Uh, everybody left the house but me. Yes, that's right. I've been left alone, unattended, unaccounted for, and it could get out of hand. Now, thankfully for America, I have to work tomorrow. So Friday's going to be a nice, easy night with a couple of home brews. Early morning, half day of work, but then tomorrow we're firing up the smoker. I smoke a bird, I think a roast. It's going to be delicious, but the problem with the smoker is it takes six hours. There's nothing you do except sit there and watch the fucking thing, maybe throw in a couple wood chips. And it's real great for drinking. So six hours of drinking while you wait for food usually happens that you get done, you eat like a fucking bastard with fucking sauce and shit smeared all over you, use your hand as a goddamn napkin. It's then you go home half drunk, still in a food coma, and pass out. Yeah, sounds like a good day. I'll take a gander at this guy. Probably can't see much. Carbonation looks reasonable. Not much of a head on there. I'm kind of disappointed. This here is my White Whale Ale. Yeah, that's right. There's a Moby Dick reference in my beer. I know you're probably not going to take me for that kind of guy, because frankly, I haven't read the book. But hey... Everybody knows the drill. The white whale's a goddamn metaphor, right? Right. That's how it's going to go. So that was going to be my pitch with this one. The white whale ale. Don't let it be the one that got away. Uh, the first time I made it... Ooh. Hey, that ain't bad. The first time I made it... Um, it's a total accident. I was making a batch of beer... And they happen to be cutting up a pineapple at my house. I say, you give me all that stuff that's left. All that stuff that was left went in the beer. I threw some saffron in there for good measure. Um, and honey. That's what I missed this time. That's the only difference. This thing should have had about 12 ounces of honey in there. Actually, the first time I did it, I put in so much fucking saffron that it was actually fairly reddish when I finished. And you could see little chunks of it floating. Then I did a Google search and found out how much fucking saffron is worth. Jesus Christ, I could sell my saffron off and get more back. I'll put it this way. Saffron per gram compared to crack? It ain't even in the ballpark, man. If you had the capacity to do it, the way to be rich is to... Uh, saffron. That's... It's like the, it, what it is, just like, it's the pistol of a flower. You know, that little pistol, this, this, that little thing? Okay, so imagine you pick that, then you dry it. So now it's even lighter than it was to begin with. You know how many little tiny pistols of a flower dried it takes to make a fucking ounce? That takes a lot of fucking flowers. And this shit, I can't remember what it was, and I'm not going to quote the number because it's ridiculous. But go Google it. I mean, that shit's selling, it's like... I, I can't remember. I did the math. I want to say it's on par with fucking gold per ounce if you look at it. Because it's just it's so small you can't produce it in mass quantities. Hence the rarity that's driving shit up. But I digress. Like, apparently that was my grandma's plan too. She was going to hoard saffron and then one day, you know, it's like the underpants gnome. Step one, acquire all the saffron. Step three, profit. Yeah, grandmas are good for that. And since this episode really didn't have a point, it's already going off the rails. Speaking of my grandma, oh man, I've actually used a lot of the shit from her house in my beer. Because my grandma, a trait that's been passed down, we don't throw away shit. I'll put it to you this way. When grandma died, we cleaned out her freezer. I took most of the fruit. Um... Some of the raspberries that I just put in my last batch of beer that is currently fermenting went in the freezer the year I fucking graduated high school. Okay? And take a look at this. It has been a while since I have been enlisted in high school. Okay? So <laughs> I've got fucking like 20 year old berries in there. So all the shit that Grandma hoarded that was just gonna go in a bag and get fucking dumped. I was like, no, no. I am genetically not able to let you throw that shit away while it still has a use. There's still like a glimmer, like, no, I'll find it, like, nah, no saffron, barbecue seasoning, and raspberries from 1997. G give them all to me. 
give them all to me. They're going. They're going in beer. And that's what's happened. So, I, if Grandma only knew that all the shit she saved all those years was going in my beer, but as my cousin said, she'd just be glad it got used. And I say, yeah, you're right. You're right. But grandmas, grandmas are an interesting sort, man. Not just my grandma, every fucking grandma. You know, they've all got their little grandma foibles and whatnot. And I think that's going to change generationally. Like, for our uh, age group, like, grandma meant a certain thing, you know? There's going to be Matlock and Bingo and usually church, you know, the big check, you know, check all the grandma boxes. And I don't know if this next generation, I don't know if grandmas are going to be uh, quite as churchy. I don't know if that was just like a thing where, you know, everybody's kind of indoctrinated into it as they were younger and uh, the numbers stayed, or if it's just that as you approach death, you think, hey, <laughs> fuck, you know, let's, let's, let's check out this God thing, man, because I ain't got a whole lot of time. I better, uh, I better fucking hedge my bets here. Um, yeah, so my grandma was definitely very, very churchy, very churchy, um, in fact, I'll tell you this one before I close down. Oh, uh, this is my favorite grandma story, and there's many. I live in a small town, 4,000 people. Every fall, in fact, just two weeks ago here, we have a big parade. Big, I use quotation marks. Um, yeah, it's, it's a relative term. Anywho, we have a big parade. Uh, they block off a big section of the town, and all the shit goes around in a big loop and out. Right? It's like the biggest thing that happens... To this town, well, county fair, county fair. I gotta tip my hat to the county fair. But close second, I do believe, is the Harvest Festival parade that we have every year. So, like I said, we've got a square, town square, got a big courthouse, giant dome, looks real turn of the century ish. Uh, you know, Civil War monuments out front and shit like that, like kind of dating it for you. But yeah, so we got a big square downtown, and uh, this shit gets all fenced off. So the parade's got a root. So the whole thing, I mean, half town's fucking shut down. Well, the problem with that is, is parades here. You got parade here. Oh, so here's parade. And here's grandma. But over here is church. So church, grandma, parade. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you might, you probably do the math on that one, but uh, grandma don't give no fucks about no parade, because church, and grandma is going to get to church if she's got to go through six fucking parades. So, so sure enough, I'm sitting there, and I have to be right there, and I watch her come through, and the parade loops around the fucking square, so grandma coming in has to go through the parade, right? Does this goes through the parade like angry like she's pit like the fucking they put a parade between me and church this is bullshit i am gonna talk to jesus when i get there and she came through the first line so now she's hemmed in in a one block area with parade on both sides of her and you can literally see church so i mean church is like it's right in the fucking she's and you can see and like i said she's fucking pissed man like not like she just drove through a parade like she's the ass. No, the parade is the fucking asshole because church. And I have to go there because they're doing a thing and it's for the money for the church and blah, blah, blah. Fuck you, Jesus. And I'm boom, right through the next part of the parade. And I just laugh so fucking hard because that's just science. I mean, you can put that, you can make an equation out of that. Like... Grandma, over here you got church, you got parade. Sorry, church is always greater than parade. And grandma proved that shit mathematically. Sorry, can't deny it. It's just science. It's just science. <laughs>